I've known him for some time now. I think more than five years. Uh, we've been friends. Uh, he's my partner, not my partner in crime. My partner in uh, workouts. When I do, we, we do our workout together most of the time. And I know him to be uh, a very disciplined person when it comes to uh, lifestyle. Yeah, you know, he has a um, wonderful lifestyle. Uh, for example, his eating habits, I like the way he's very, very straight with his eating. Um, he believes in this concept, let your food be your medicine, let your medicine be be, be your food. He, he practices it, and I and I really like that. Then he's also into uh, farming. He has a he has a garden at the back of his house. He's going to tell you more about that. Uh, and then he also believes in sustainability. You know, I've been telling you in our class that one of the the, the focus areas that we're looking at this semester is uh, sustainability, and, and I think he really practices that. And um, recently, uh, he also, I want to show you something, um, you know, I'm not sure whether everybody can see this. Okay. Okay. Can you see this? Uh, it's a medicinal plant that I encouraged me to plant and, and this is growing. I'm sure I'm going to plant more other, other, other seeds uh, to, to really follow in his footsteps. Uh, without much ado, I think we, we are going to start. I don't want to waste his time. He might tell you a little more about himself. And so after he finishes his talk, uh, be, uh, I mean, you should be bold to ask questions. I know most of the time you don't want to ask questions. You might not want to ask questions from me or from your friends, your colleagues, but this is someone I believe you are going to learn from. Be free to ask him questions. So uh, over to you. Uh, Dion, with your talk, I think I've made you the host, so you can begin to share. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, and hello, everyone else um, at DUT. Um, just to give you some background, I studied at DUT from 1995 to 97. I studied journalism. So we are actually classmates, although separated by a few years. And um, we were down at the Lost Campus. We called all the Lost City, we called it. I don't know if it's still called that, but down at um, Warwick Triangle area. Right, so I'm going to um, share the uh, my slide. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do this, no problem. We did this in testing. Um, are you able to see this? Tosin, can you see that? Absolutely, we can see. Can. Okay, great. Okay, wonderful. So um, my talk today is going to be about my journey in growing closer to real food and my connection with nature and how those two are pretty much interwoven. And I hope that you will be inspired to over time also develop this connection with nature and the natural world. You know, we are living in a very technical, technologically driven world, but the reality is everything still hinges on the natural world, all the natural laws, etc., still apply. You know, we we can fly planes, but gravity has not been conquered. It's it's still there. You um, just have to look at all the you know the plane crashes over the years to realize that gravity is still the boss, and we are, you know, we part of that that system, and we still have to fall in line with it. So, what I'm showing you here has been grown 100% in my garden: various fruits and greens, and tubers, and even mushrooms sometimes come up correctly identified um, by experts that's fine um, to obviously to eat them, they, they supplementing your, your diet. And because you are all students, well, ostensibly the, everyone watching now um, is in to the food safety um, paradigm, you know, to me, the, the, the safest food is organic food, food that you've grown yourself. And I'll, I'll walk you through that as we, as we go um, to the next slides. But so that's it. Dion Braun has been living in Durban for 20 plus years and um, been growing my, my own food since 2005. And it's been a process of adding and subtracting sometimes and kind of just rejigging what um, works for me. You, you really have to grow what you, you enjoy eating. 
Okay, so I just need to find out why it's not allowing me to uh, move on to the next slide, which is most odd. Um, let me see here. Mm. Very odd. Sorry, Tosin, I don't know if you could give me some advice. I've never had this happen before. Um, you can still see the screen, the, the sharing. Hello, Tosin. I can see the screen. Um, you, what you can about, see my slide. You can see my slide. I can see it. Um, where do you? Um, I'll go into. I'll go into. I'm in. I'm in Acrobat. Let's just check. Um, yeah, that's very odd. Let's just try that. No. Okay, it's not. Oh, me. Go. Got it. Okay, got it. Got it. Got okay, it. Finally, that's the brain yeah. is working. So that's you good. know, I think. Thank you, Tosin. Um, I, I, I know for a fact, being a, I'm a journalist, um, the human stories are where it's all at. You are studying food uh, safety and whatever you will then move on into purely based on your interests and your motivations, your, your personality. So my lessons, as many of us who are fortunate to have parents when we're young adults, um, is from my mom and my dad. And this photo is my father in Namibia in 1964. So he would have been 40 then. He was Austrian and he fought in the Second World War on the wrong side. Um, you know, Europe was in such massive turmoil. He would have been 15 when the Second World War started. Um, and I, I don't know when he was conscripted, but it would have been, you know, he wouldn't have probably, he wouldn't have been 20 yet. But eventually he was captured by the Americans in Italy, I believe. So that was at the end of the war, 1945. So he would have been 21 then, a crazy time in Europe. But basically he survived and worked in Europe for a long time after that, then decided to travel through Africa. And he traveled through the Sahara Desert. And he met my mom finally when he arrived in South Africa. Long story short, he had survived all this craziness. Um, but the one thing that he hadn't thought about, um, and that, that was health. And sometimes, we, you know, we, we forget that health is ultimately our greatest wealth. It's, it's our foundation. Everything hinges on that. You can't work. You can't think. You can't live without good health. And in those days, everyone smoked, and there was really no occupational safety. And he was a welder boilermaker, and he was in very toxic, he worked in very toxic conditions, working in factories, building factories and breathing in those fumes. And ultimately what happened was he got a, a cancer in his, uh, growing on his larynx and, and it took a while, and, but uh, he, had, he had treatment and it, and it just wasn't being, um, it wasn't he wasn't responding. And so eventually it was removed. And, as, and then he passed away in 1990 when I was studying uh, down in Sarsfeld, I was studying timber technology. And it, that taught me that there is cause and effect in life, that we can't break the rules of nature and get away with it. We, we might be able to get away with it for a while. It's like the plane. We, we are you know, beating gravity, but ultimately gravity is still the boss. And all the rules of, of the universe, the physical laws that we have as scientists um, have come to study um, still apply. And so we can sometimes seemingly get away with it, especially when we're young. You know, you can do crazy stuff when you're young. And, and people, when they're young, do crazy things. They drink a lot of alcohol, they party hard. And somehow you think, hey, we're going to be, we're going to be the new generation that's going to be different. Um, but in, in this case, I, I learned that, that there's cause and effect. And my father's lifestyle was not a healthy one. He, he ate a lot of meat, he drank alcohol, and he smoked. So there were a lot of things stacked against him. Um, okay, so let's see why that's happening again. Sorry about this, people. Technical snafus, they say. Okay, so then in 2011, I had a truly remarkable experience. I was invited to India by the event organizer that puts on this race. And it's a 100-mile run over five days and it's split up some some stages are longer and some are shorter but the really cool thing is that you get to see parts of you know the himalayan foothills that 
uh, most people are not going to see it. And you're going to see it on foot. And so that photograph is, is of me at about 3,600 meters uh, above sea level. And that mountain there, um, it was incorrectly named, I think, by the photographer as Everest, but I think it's actually Kanchenchunga, which is the third highest mountain in the world. You don't hear much from it, of it much because it's a sacred mountain. But anyway, so I was running there. And then what I learned from India was um, the, the, the course, actually, the race started in or well, the, the whole organization started in Delhi and there was such incredible pollution, awful pollution. And it, it took hours to get anywhere. There was just, there were so many people on, on the roads. And what I learned from India was that you have this incredible beauty of nature. And then at the same time, you go into the cities and there's overcrowding, there's noise. It's, it's not a pleasant environment. And my lesson from India was that we live on a finite planet. We are consuming finite resources. Some of them are renewable, but many of them are not. And, and as we've learned from COVID, many of the, the choices, the dietary choices we make have very, very powerful impacts on us as well. You know, the whole story of that, did it start in a wet market or not? But a all of our diseases really originally came from non-human animals. We caught you know, the cold and flu and smallpox, all from other animals before, and then they jumped to us and became far more virulent. So I came back from India saying, wow, I've got to change my life. I've got to change the way I do things. And I, what I slowly started doing was, was tweaking my diet. I was, hey, I'm, I'm, I used to eat chicken, you know, so I said, I'm not going to eat any more chicken. I'm tired of, um, you know, the, the, processed, the processes that go into chicken, um, the cruelty aspect. And then slowly but surely, I started kind of just tweaking my diet. And then I remember one day looking at a can of beans and realizing, wow, you know, this is not actually, these aren't beans. These are actually, this is actually um, water with sugar, with salt, with an emulsifier, with a thickener. I thought, and then there, is some, then there are beans in here as well. But I thought, you know what, they don't even really taste that great. And from that day, I started making sure that I actually process my own food. My, um, I soak my own beans, cook them. I've got more control over the quality and I have total control over the, the ingredients that are added at least. Um, and that was really a game changer for me. Now, Ron Finley, you've, you've got to watch this. I've, there's a, a TED talk with that name on, on, on the web. Uh, please watch it, it's only 10 minutes, but he really is an excellent human being, a really funny guy. Uh, he got basically the L in LA, he's in South Central. He got, he got, you know, he was told you can't grow vegetables on the sidewalk. You have to look after the sidewalk, but you can't grow vegetables. And, um, and during the talk, you know, he talks about his, his challenges um, and definitely food is the problem of our modern, a modern culture we've got more possessions and more value and more wealth now than ever before but the problem is people are becoming sicker and it's really happening in the so-called developed world and it's almost as if as our infrastructure develops our thought processes diminish and we we start relying on you know the the system to look after us but we forget that the system is actually not geared up for us it's actually geared up for the system's benefit um, and i'll get onto that in the next slide when I get there. I somehow I have to alternate between, sorry about this, but I have to alternate between. So this is what people see as the problem, and I agree with them, that we have this hierarchy that mankind is above all, and then all the, including, and you can see here in some cultures, it would be, well, women kind are subservient to, to mankind as well. And you can see how it kind of goes, it goes almost by the, uh, the species size. Um, and, you know, small things are not important. Now we all know, and you know, that the bacterial world drives life on earth. And um, this is completely wrong. But so this is totally an ego system. This is very much like, this is our planet. Everything must serve us. And I believe that that is wrong for humans to believe that we are the dominant force, um, I believe is not, is not sustainable and it's not a reality in the real world of science. I think that is something we need to con consign to the scrap heap of memes. 
<clears throat> All right, so sorry about the jumping back and forth, but I have no idea. Now, this guy, Jeff Lawton, he's an Australian born in the UK, and he is one of the leading proponents of permaculture, which is pretty much what changed my life. I was uh, invited to a permaculture get together here in Durban. And that's when I real, realized that what I was already doing in my garden after you know, a few years of growing things was already permaculture. And permaculture is really just about, it's a, a conglomeration of permanent and culture and also permanent and agriculture. So what it's all about is that the current food system that we have, the Western food system, which is actually a new system and it's not traditional. If you talk, if you talk about you know, conventional agriculture, it should really be the old time agriculture that we saw in Africa, Europe, Asia, and the, the Americas where people were growing their own food. But anyway, so the new, the new paradigm is, well, we've got to use an annual crop, which has to be replaced every year. It's very, um, we, don't put, we don't put any inputs. We don't put, the only things we put are chemicals. So it'll all come from fossil fuels. Um, the old way was you let that land rest, you plant cover crops, you, you do different ways of regenerating that soil. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the annual one monoculture crop, you can't do that or you don't do that. And so they spray heavily. And then because it's all, they just found millions of these individuals in one field, they then start spraying them with these various pesticides because you know, nature doesn't um, work with monoculture. So what we are doing is totally unnatural and it just doesn't work. So I agree with Jeff Lawton's quote. Um, um, I don't know whether it will solve a, a Putin problem, but I think that it all, it all percolates down to the fact that we've got a system that is not sustainable in the, in the long term. And we should all be trying um, to find something new. Just because what we have now is existing does not mean it will be around in 50 years time or 100 years time. So uh, I, I, I just want to show you these three resources. Food Inc. is a film that I saw maybe 10 years ago, and I highly recommend you see it. Of the three here that I, I would say, that is probably the one made for, uh, for students of, the, of your, your topic, um, because it shows the different, uh, the different results of the, 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 the industrial food system and what it, what it causes to communities and what it does to the environment. So I highly recommend you see this. This is the, the film that changed uh, my way of thinking in a very large degree. It's not pro anything. It really shows the, the problems um, that, that are being created and perpetuated. Then a, a few years after that, I saw Cowspiracy, and that was really my, very much about how the, the, you know, the animal ag industry is, uh, is not planet friendly and gave ideas on how we could do things differently. And then by the same filmmakers, what the health, if you are interested in personal health, the, the health of your loved ones, you know, um, this is a film to see because then you realize how systems are set up. And as I say, in, in a capitalist society, uh, the, the, the bottom line is the bottom line. It really does come down to making profits because you've got shareholders and you've got CEOs that want to show how well their company has done. So there will be a lot of cutting corners, et cetera. And, and if, if, you know, like we'll remember from the smoking years, the smoking industry denied at first that, you know, smoking caused lung cancer. And then there were thousands of papers, scientific papers, showing that there was causality. And um, eventually people started suing the tobacco industry. And we're going to find that uh, people are going to be trying to sue the food industry as well. Um, but really, people have to take that decision themselves to, to eat healthily. We know that the data is all it's out there. You go to um, PubMed, you go and look, you can see the, the results. Bad food. Uh, Processed food um, is going to make you sick. It just takes it takes a few years, but be patient. All right. So, as we were talking about the old the old thinking, when I say the old thinking, it's kind of old since the nineteen forties. Is that we need to 
fight nature, that nature is trying to prevent us doing the things we need to do to, to live on this planet. So we need to fight her and we need to use chemicals because, hey, chemicals are cool. And, you know, um, we'll, we'll show nature who's the boss. Okay, the reality is that we are poisoning ourselves. Uh, I think maybe, you know, if humans are around in 100 or 200 or 300 years, I'm, I'm very, be very interested to know what they're going to actually say. But I think one of them will probably be that, hey, they actually put poison on their own food and then ate it. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mystify them. And, um, yeah, it's kind of a, an indictment of our, our generation that we've um, accepted this. Um, the reality, with the, the reason we accept it is because it takes time for you to see those results. So by the time your elders are sick, it's almost too late because you've been following in their footsteps. So I hope that my talk today is going to help you think about cause and effect and make changes in your own life. Okay, so this would be an, this is an agroforestry or a regenerative agriculture or a permaculture setup. They all have slightly different names. This one, or different, not, they've got different names, but they have different um, ways of doing things. So this might be an, an agroforestry setup where you've got banana plants, you could have pawpaws growing in there, and then you have other crops that you are growing in between. And this is alley cropping, and you're using the system that's been generated here, some of the shade in the morning, etc., to grow other things. You can be growing turmeric and ginger, and uh, these could be cash crops. So this could be a very successful small-scale farmer, and you can scale this up as well. Um, it's very in um Encouraging to see how people are talking of millions and tens of millions of euros being invested in, in regenerative agriculture. And if you look on, on the web, you'll find many podcasts that are now covering that. So the future is exciting. Um, I think there is a place for all of the different ways of growing things because grains still need to be grown on, on a large scale. But I think for healthier food, um, we should be looking at this this method. And that's what I've been doing in my garden. I've been turning what was a lawn before into a, into a food forest. And, um, and it really has been quite a journey and, a, and it's something I'm very grateful for. Again, sorry about the... Okay, so just a, a really great um, quote from Vandana Shiva that it's not about the money. Ultimately, when you are like my father, he was retiring and wanting to really have a, a really relaxed, chilled life after uh, you know a lifetime of work and then to get sick. And then all the money in the world doesn't really matter. All you want is your health and your physical security. And I think that we should you know, take note of that. And you've got, um, as young people, you do have a lot of earning to do still. And I'm not saying you should become hippies, but... It'll definitely behoove you well to just keep in mind these principles because you'll go full circle and your life will change. Where you're at now um, is very different from where you're going to be in 10 years' time and 20 and 30 and 40 years' time. You'll be a totally different person. You'll look different and you'll think different. And that, that's great. That's, 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 that's maturing and that's something we should all um, embrace. It's not something we should be afraid of. Going back to Mr. Ron Finley, um, I, I really love this quote because when you get to that point where you have, you've earned your money, you can now start kind of kicking back and start thinking more about your, your health and your, your sanity in a way. You know, we live in a very fast paced world and um, yeah, and you, you can choose how fast paced it is. You can fast, choose how fast the hamster wheel is going to spin. Um, Ron Finley, he chose to live a quality life, or he is choosing that, and he's choosing to make a difference. And I would say that he is probably happier than 99% of the business executives on the uh, stock exchange on Wall Street. And um, I think also just a really nice person compared to some of the, the people that you might encounter in, in those environments. Okay, and then the result of all the work that you put in um, is abundance. And as I say, you grow what you want to grow. Um, the food, the, the, the plant kingdom is absolutely amazing. Um, we'll get back, we'll get onto that now. And so is the, the, the fungus kingdom. Um, so I would just encourage you, 
while you're going through your studies, think about the source, think about where all this health really comes from. It comes from these, these fellow creatures on our planet and, um, and it's just great to, to celebrate them. And so some of my advice for you is to start growing your own. You could live in a block of flats. It doesn't really matter. If you can get a little patch of land that doesn't belong to you and you could say to someone, hey, would you mind if I grow some plants here and I will share with you. Um, people in the US and around the world now are actually growing plant uh, crops on in yards. They're not even their own. They, they get permission from the owner and then they share profits or whatever they do. Maybe they give them a, a certain um, amount of food every, every month. And some people are making really good money on that. So it really is all about being creative and about being, um, yeah, um, about being, um, just having an imagination, you know, being imaginative. So my advice would be definitely to, to start small. Don't, um, don't try and uh, create a ra uh, an Amazon rainforest on your first day. And then leafy greens are pretty much the easiest. And I'm showing a lot of other plants here, but they will take a lot of time to mature. The best ones are the amphenos, you know, the amaranth and, um, other plants that you can really just stick a stick in the ground and they'll start growing. Uh, there's Mexican tree spinach and there's um, then there's cassava, and they are really great. So leafy greens are for me the 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 foundation of a really healthy uh, life. And then the permaculture basics. There's so much info on on the web. And zone one is a permaculture principle that you grow your most used foods right near your kitchen or wherever you prepare your food so that it's very easy to go out there and get a herb or um, whatever you need, some greens, and then you bring them in. You don't want to plant them two kilometers, you know, down the road, going through a swamp to collect the food because you just wouldn't do it. And the thing I love about um, gardening really is it's a, it is an escape. I've reconnected with nature. It's something that I learned when I was in uh, in the Himalayas to, to feel really, really small against nature and to acknowledge that and to be humble and to say, hey, you know what, that's cool. I'm, I'm just a speck in the universe and I'm going to do my good. I'm going to, as Steve Jobs said, I'm going to try and put a dent in the universe, but you know, I'll do it in my way and, um, and I'm going to feel great about it. And so to be in the gardening is hard work. Um, I've run and I've cycled and I've paddled, but I can tell you gardening is really good exercise. Um, and as Ron Finley says, at the end of it, you get strawberries as well. So it's a, it's a no-brainer. And of course, health. You will find that you will be more connected with your health. Um, in the last few slides, just to say that my research has shown that there are anything upward of 370,000 species of plant, um, as shown here, up to 4,000, 400,000 rather. Um, which is an astronomical figure. Of course, it's a lot smaller than the number of known insects or bacteria. Um, but of those, around 300,000 can be eaten or used for medicines and drugs, okay? And then 20,000 uh, plant species are used around the world um, by the indigenous peoples of... So just traditionally, they've been used by the peoples of those areas. And then... 200, so you can see it's starting to whittle down. 200 are used regularly. Um, and only, like in, in the Western world, only 50% or up to 50% of our calories come from just those three. So you can imagine with 25,000 phytonutrients and estimation, um, that many phytonutrients, and how many do we need for our, our health? Tons, because when you look at the research, um, it's overwhelmingly... On the fa in the in favor of hey we need spices we need these different phytonutrients and the thing is different groups of plants have different phytonutrients so you can't say well I'm only going to eat potatoes you won't get those phytonutrients um, so diversity is, is is really 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 important and I'd encourage you to to pursue that three resources that I have gained a lot from in the last I'd say seven or eight years would be the book on the left, which is really how not to die. So he's not saying uh, you won't die. It's really, there are many ways to die. And these are the ways you don't need to die. And it's a fascinating book. Uh, if I could just hold it up here, it really is a, 
a very thick uh, book with lots, lots, lots and lots of references. Um, and a book that I uh, consult regularly. The first 15 uh, chapters are on the top 15 killers in the US. Um, being killed by your doctor is one of those ways. Um, that's from infections. Uh, and then the, the next 12 chapters are on, on, the, on the daily dozen. So in the center, you'll see the app that comes from the book, which is, and they're all the, um, you know, the, 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 the daily dozen is free. Um, it, that will show you how you're doing with those daily dozen. Uh, you can't see the, the full dozen, but exercise is one of them. And uh, good hydration is the other. And uh, yeah, making sure that you don't overdo the, the stimulants. So coffee is not actually on that list, but the different teas and herbal teas are. Um, and there, the great thing here is you can go through and you can click on how many portions you're having a day. So beans, you are, um, the advisory is three portions of beans or legumes or in peanut butter, you know, a tablespoon of peanut butter would count as a serving, but then go for diversity and then have lentils or sprouts uh, that you've made yourself, which is very easy. Um, and you can just go through every day and check that you're doing them. I'm now an autopilot with this. I, I know all of them. I use all of them. I, I, we all have challenges. My challenge is still the cruciferous vegetables, like broccoli, because number one, you know, you want to have them fresh. And I don't like going to the store because I have so much food here. But there are various ways you can get around that. Uh, flax seeds, everyone should be grinding flax seeds and eating them. You know, nuts and seeds. Um, yeah, it's just uh, a very easy to follow uh, um, app and very user friendly. And then the third is the founder of of the the website and the writer of the and the author of the book. Um, his website is nutritionfacts.org. And yeah, I sit, I recommend you go and have a look at it. Maybe type in and look for a, a topic that you're interested in and see what uh, the take is. You'll find that when the, when you look at videos, there'll be lots of um, they'll he'll have an, uh, an, uh, a transcript so you can read it if you prefer. And then also there's a a tab for all the um, the references and uh, you know references as you know inside should not be a blogger or an expert with a following on YouTube of 10 million that is no uh, that is no proof of veracity you've you've really got to go with the, the science and the especially the peer review um, reviews the double blind um, so I hope that those will will um, inspire you and uh, encourage you to to really go deeper into your nutrition. You remember at the beginning we showed the ego system, and that is pretty much how we have been running the show up until now. It isn't doing all that well, especially when there's a guy called Putin at the top of the who thinks he's at the top of the triangle. Um, but this is really where it's at. This is the reality that we are part of this massive 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 ecosystem of millions of different species and we should uh, realize that we have a rightful place in that but we should not try and overwhelm the others we should not try and you know destroy a species that we don't deem useful you know i'll give you an example the, the honeybee everyone goes oh we need we should have more honeybees but the reality is the honeybee is one species of bee and in south africa or in Southern Africa, there are 1,200 different species of bee, and some of them are solitary bees. So when you, they, are, they don't have a beehive, and they are all very important as well. So if we encourage the, the honeybee, populations of the other bees could collapse, and we don't know what the long-term effects of that will be. So we should all be, be thankful for insects. We shouldn't be swatting them and thinking they're pests, even ants even though we might not see a benefit, they, they are part of that ecosystem. And uh, permaculture incorporates all of that and um, respects all of that. Right, nearly, nearly to the last slide. Um, yes, so to me, I, I decided to redesign my life because when I looked at the way the food system was, was running the show, it didn't align with my values. And I realized that it was actually, a, it is actually a dying model. I don't want to be like my father as much as I, I loved him, of course. I don't want to be like my father to, to, to become sick um, in my 60s and to, to 
to, to lose my life for no good reason. Um, I just think that now we know enough that there is no reason to be eating fast food. There is no reason to be really poisoning ourselves. And I, I think the question we should ask ourselves is when I eat this, is it moving me closer to health? And especially is it moving me closer to health in the future? Uh, because what I have learned is that now you feel great and you kind of think that you can put off things and that you'll cross bridges later. It's very much the, the marshmallow principle. Would you like one marshmallow now, Johnny? Or would you like two marshmallows next week? Um, and the vast majority of us are choosing the, I'll have the, the marshmallow now, thanks. And, um, and it's really with food as well, convenience. It's, it's all about, you know, just going the easy route and you think, well, I'll, I'll become healthier tomorrow or whenever. But just keep in mind that when you are 90, you can only feel the emotions and the pain that you are at that moment. And whoever you were when in your 20s isn't going to help you. You really are living your life right now in the now. So think of your future self and be gentle and be wise for that future self because that future self will thank you one day um, for making the right decisions. It's a bit like saving in investing. You know, it's you're giving away money that you could spend. And you know that there is no guarantee really that you will ever enjoy the benefits, but you have the belief that you will. And I think the same should be with our food that um, you're in control of your life. You're in control of your health um, as much as you can. And um, you should be the, the, the odd banana out on the, uh, on the bunch. You know, normally banana bunches ripen um, uniformly from the from the top of the bunch um, but occasionally you get this like um, the, I had to take a photograph of that because it is quite rare and you almost have to be the fish that swims upstream everyone else is taking the easy route down down the river and you going no I'm going to be um, I'm going to have the, the 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 power the bravery the self um, the faith in myself that I can um, do this so I hope that it's, it's a very, very quick overview. I didn't want to go on too long, but I just hope that it gives you a good idea of, of um, what you can do. And um, yeah, I look forward to hearing any, any questions from you. Um, and before that, just to say thank you. And um, I think I will stop sharing now, so we'll see. Thank you so much. Dion, for that interesting presentation, sharing your life journey. You, you called it your food journey when you told me about yes. the topic you wanted to, you know, call it. And, and I'm sure that um, the students too must have learned a lot from your journey, from your life story, uh, about your dad, and how you have changed your uh, lifestyle. And I see it. That was the time I told you that you're looking younger. You're looking 10 years younger than your age. <laughs> Interesting. But I'm, I'm, oh yeah, by the way, I'm 75, everyone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, now to the students. Do you have questions? Looking Any questions? Does anybody want to uh, ask a question? You can just raise up your hand if you want to ask a question. Any question for Dion? Any question? I don't buy it. I really don't buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something by even leaving. Okay. Yeah, so I uh, hope I, I hope it did help. Anile, uh, Anile, do you have any question? Come on. Mm. That's it. No, because I was just impressed by the way you came from being a journalist to so experiencing all you did. Okay. It's so okay. amazing. Okay. Yes, okay. thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, I would, I would say. Thank you. Sorry, just, <laughs> what I would say to yeah. that, Anneli, is um, yeah, you know, you are a, a scientist and um, and always stay um, very curious about the world. And I think um, ask those questions and ask ask dumb questions as well. And always ask what if, what if, what if, you know, what if we didn't do things this way? Or, is there another way to do this? Um, and I, yeah, I really hope that for the human race, as we hurtle towards 8 billion people that we will find ways to 
to do things differently um, because yeah the current system isn't um, isn't a, a great system and I, I really don't know how it will be changed but I all I know is that you can only do what you want to do um, if you want to if you don't like the system so you know be the be the change you want to see in this world to to steal a, a, a quote from somebody Thank you. <laughs> and all the Thank best you. Thank you. Does anybody also have any other question? Okay, there's no more other question. Thanks for coming. Uh, I just want to thank Dion for finding time uh, to do the yeah. presentation. You know, I'm grateful that you were able to make it. Thank you so much. I I'm also uh, going to be uh, sharing your recording on my YouTube channel. You know, other people can also learn from it. And all the students that didn't attend will have opportunity to also see it, also watch Magic. Magic. Thank you so Magic. much. Uh, students, stuff. enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Dion, enjoy yeah. the rest of your afternoon. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. We Stay talk healthy, later. everyone. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Bye.